Welcome to another Big Daddy D adventure. Today we've got a project adventure. We're going to be building a chop saw station onto my existing uh, horizontal rack that I built in the last video. Yeah, I had been using my chop saw on a uh, northern tool table for a long time, right in the middle of my shop, and it just throws chips everywhere. So I built a horizontal rack in the last video, and then I figured that uh, this would be a good spot to put a chop saw station because I had two long flat tops and then uh, I could put a piece between those two racks and uh, go ahead and drop it down where the, the steel would lay flat on the top of those two racks and uh, that way I get uh, some mixed use out of that space. Uh, I didn't have to add an extra special space for uh, another chop saw. One of the big reasons I had for making it to be an adjustable shelf is I planned on making some upgrades to this chop saw station in the near future. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to make sure I had something I could cut steel and I wouldn't throw chips across the shop. So, well, let's uh, jump in and go ahead and start cutting some steel and you'll see how I put it all together. All right, the uh, basic frame here is I just used some inch and a half square tubing. Funny thing is actually uh, some scrap steel I had. I had an old deer blind tower and uh, these were, I guess, 10 year old rusted legs. But anyway, here I am cutting them to length. Again, there's two, two long bars and then two short bars uh, to make the centerpiece. And really, it's not a real complicated piece today that we're going to be making. Now that I have all the steel cut, it's time to tack it all together. So I was glad that uh, most of these small pieces fit up on my little table, so I wasn't having to do everything on the floor. But I did still use the technique of, you know, putting the angles underneath it to make sure everything was in plane. And then uh, I clamped a piece to the top there just to make sure that everything, uh, again, was perpendicular and square. As I mentioned before, I was using some scrap steel here, so ran into a little bit of difficulties uh, getting this frame tacked out. So I went ahead and got my little angle grinder out and put a flap disc on it and cleaned it up a little bit so those welds would go in there a little bit better. Now that the frame's all tacked together, I went ahead and used that flap disc and cleaned up all the weld surfaces so I'd make sure I got good penetration on those welds. And it was just a matter of uh, making sure I just welded everything out. I tried to uh, bounce my welds around, go one side, then another side, to try to keep the frame from torquing whenever I was welding it. I didn't want to concentrate all the weld and have the frame kind of try to twist on me. The next step here is now that I have the frame, I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes in this frame. Uh, I'm using some 3 8 bolts to hold everything together. And uh, it just needs uh, four holes, one in each of the four corners. And then uh, that's where I'm going to go ahead and match it up to the rack and then uh, pilot drill those holes into the rack. Now that I have all of the holes in the chop saw station frame, what I've done is I've aligned the racks to where everything would mate up and I clamped it all together. Then what I'm doing is I'm just using the holes I just drilled as the guide and I'm uh, punching the holes through the the rack uh, kind of match drilling these so that I get them all in the right spot. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and mocked up the shelf to make sure all the bolt holes lined up and I could get bolts through it. Then uh, what I'm doing here is I'm notching out the corners where those bolt heads go. That way I can have access to that bolt head from the top to allow me to take it apart or, or lower it or adjust it as needed. All right, it's time to make some long bolts. What I've done is I've cut some all thread to uh, I think about nine inch lengths. And uh, all I'm doing here is just welding a nut to one end of it so uh, it acts as a bolt head. All right, new tool here. This is supposed to put a chamfer on the end of a nut. So I cut some all thread here. We'll see how it works. That way you're able to start the uh, bolts a little easier. Let's see if I can get this in the frame here. Let's see if it deburs the end. And, hey, there you go. 
See that big burr on the end of that? I don't know if you can see that. That looks like it cleaned it up pretty good. Very nice. Very nice. Now we got bolts long enough. Yay! Two thumbs up. All right, here's a tool, uh, tool tip time. These guys are inch and a half. What I did is I set this up to be three quarters of an inch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just go around and scribe it. That's one mark. Scribe it this way. Notice that there's a gap there, and then because I'm putting it over the edge, so that means it, it's not quite to the center. And I got that one, and I got that one. So now what I have, let's see if we can see this. Now what we have is we have a little box, because each one of them is off center a little bit. So that right in the center of that, let's see if I can get that to zoom in, is... The center then all I need to do is come back in and put a center punch right in the middle of the box and that's a quick way to do stuff where you know the dimensions you can just mark them off you're not really finding center you're finding a round center and that's the best way but uh, these are hardened steel this is not hardened steel so it really doesn't mess up the end of your calipers but another way to mark stuff in case you need to have it you do need to either have it, you know, some type of uh, coloring or rust. Some people uh, on clean metal, you'll just have, uh, you know, you'll have some black oil or sometimes you just paint them blue or, you know, run a marker in. Hopefully that helps. Now that we have all the spacer blocks center punched, we'll go ahead and put them up on the drill and go ahead and drill them all the way through. Again, these are going to be those inch and a half spacers that's going to help drop that deck down to where the chop saw will sit flush with that top board, or at least close to it. All right, now it's time to go ahead and cut the wood deck for the chop saw station. I've got the sides already done, and this is these last two pieces are just the uh, the top for the base, but that'll sit below the chop saw. All right, now that I've got everything bolted together and everything assembled, I went ahead and painted it. Just wanted to highlight the spacers here. Again, I have that inch and a half spacer, but then I was able to add some washers above that inch and a half spacer, just a few of them, to get the uh, deck to drop down far enough. I also have plenty of room left on those all threads as I make uh, further advancements or modifications to this chop saw. So, cool thing was is I got the the deck down low enough to where the uh, piece of steel when I set across it it uh, sits level and it doesn't teeter-totter and now I'm ready to start cutting so I hope you enjoyed it well thanks for coming on another workshop project adventure with me today I enjoyed taking you with me as I added a metal chop saw station to my 20-foot horizontal storage cart I hope you enjoyed coming on this project adventure with me today and hopefully learned something along the way as usual if you like what you saw Give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to go on more adventures with me in the future, hit the subscribe button. As always, take care. Bye-bye.